You're watching Eye of the Storm, where we look at basic hacks, methods, tools, and techniques for using your storm. And today's topic, what can you do with a storm? So you've taken the plunge. You got one of the storm boxes in the mail, you opened it up, and what is in it but a nice little small device, what can you do with it? Well, here are some of the things that you can do with the storm. You can do footprinting and reconnaissance, scanning networks, enumeration. You can do vulnerability analysis, system hacking, malware threats. You can create your own malware. You can upload it. You can do sniffing. You can do social engineering. There are tools galore for social engineering and denial of service attacks, session hijacking attacks. Also, you can even evade IDSs and firewalls and IPSs and honeypots. Also, you can do web hacking. You can hack web servers. You can hack web applications. You can do SQL injection with a storm and even hack wireless networks. Sniff wireless networks, hacking mobile platforms, cloud computing. If you want, you can exfiltrate data to the cloud. Use cloud hacks. You can use cryptography techniques with the storm. You can do internal and external pen testing with the storm. You can do wireless pen testing and even pen test databases. If, if you really, really, really want to, you can even watch videos on the storm's touch screen. Uh, or if you really feel like it, you can uh, download and watch some games. But really, would you really want to do that with your storm? You get a storm and it's really just a computer. So if you were to get an Apple, um, a MacBook, or some type of device, a laptop in a box, there's no manual with it. There's nothing to tell you what to do. It's assumed that you knew you know how to use a basic computer or a basic tablet in some way. And it's the same with the storm. We assume you have some networking hacking skills and you can go right to work with it. But you might want to do a few things before you get started with your storm. Number one, it includes a little rubberized floppy keyboard. You might want to get a better keyboard. Better yet, uh, get a mouse. Uh, get a battery pack to make it more flexible and portable. Uh, get a Wi-Fi dongle that can uh, handle packet sniffing and, and other tools to do radio and and use a switch and to create your own network outside your storm to connect your storm with an internal network three major things that you can do when you get a storm. Number one, you can use it in your company's red or blue team. You can use it if you are a professional pen tester and that's your business and it's so flexible that you can use it in and out of your customer sites. It's great. But what I want to focus on for most people who get a storm, the first thing you need to learn or to do is to start learning. So you might want to create your own learning lab. You might want to do that. And if you do that, you'll need a laptop or a desktop. You'll need a storm, at least one uh, Ethernet cable, a Windows, Linux, OS X, depending on how good you are with networking, VMware, or you can use Hyper-V or VirtualBox if you're very good with networking, and some tools like WinRAR and Wireshark and Firefox and Putty and WinSCP. And uh, you can download those here. Uh, you can look, just pause this here if you want to see where to do download. Those are the very common tools to download. Uh, one of the really cool things down here at the bottom is Vulnhub. Vulnhub has the vulnerable PCs that you might need. But before you get started, go check out my video on backing up the storm because you need to make sure you back it up because uh, you, don't, you don't want to brick your storm. One way not to brick your storm is to shut it down nicely and use the built-in operating system shutdown rather than just unplugging it. And better yet, not only do that, but buy a little power switch for the storm uh, that you can plug it into the SD connection, the USB connection, excuse me. And then with the USB connection, it has a little uh, switch and you can um, turn it off after you do your soft shutdown. Creating a storm lab is not too difficult. Check out my video on how to set up your storm lab, but essentially, you'll need to power it. And this is one of the configurations I really dig the storm in uh, because I can do my complete networking from here. Uh, all you need to do is Velcro these items in with Velcro sticky tape. And this is my own backpack. And, and this 
is my wireless networking, this is my power, this is my storm, and I can pop out this keyboard if I ever need to, and then here is my Wi-Fi dongle ready to go to do some on-the-run Wi-Fi hacking. Always make sure that you power your storm appropriately. It needs 5 volts, 2.5 amps. Always shut down nicely with that software shut down. Um, when you're networking your storm, as you can see here, I networked it with multiple storms and a laptop using a switch. So you can use a switch or you can do a direct connect from your Ethernet connection on your laptop into your storm. And then you can, from there, set up your lab. Uh, you would use Internet connection sharing. Uh, or configure your network. Sometimes you can use bridged mode depending on how complicated you want to make it so that all of the devices in your home network share the same networking scheme. They need to be on the same subnet. Also, there's an entire idea of setting up VMware so that you have another Kelly box or a, another, even a Ubuntu or a Windows 10 box that you can use to uh, use as part of your lab and then you can putty into it, you can exfiltrate data using WinSCP, run your own labs. It's really cool stuff. So what can you do with the storm? You can do almost anything you want, except for the dishes. This has been Eye of the Storm.